Luffy ate a fruit that gave him rubber powers to become the King of Pirates. 22 years ago, Gold Roger, the Pirate King was arrested by the Vice Admiral of the Marines. The Vice Admiral intends to sentence the Pirate King in public. He claims to the public that the pirate has committed several crimes against the world government. But now, the world will finally find peace. But Gold Roger isn't scared cause he's got other plans. He tells everyone about his treasure that can make you super rich and famous. It's up for grabs. People go crazy. And it changes everything. Starting the Great Pirate Era. Everybody's in a hurry to find this treasure called One Piece. Luffy D. Monkey is a young kid who always wanted to be a pirate. He used to play by himself, pretending to be one. Until one day, his grandfather scolded him for wasting time on childish fantasies instead of considering a career in the Marines, just like the rest of his family. When Luffy expressed his desire to become a pirate, his grandfather got angry and destroyed everything Luffy had built with his own hands, forcing him into rigorous training. Soon after, Luffy decided to run away and met Shanks, a kind pirate. He really wanted to join Shanks's crew. But Shanks didn't think he was ready, so Luffy did something crazy and cut his own face to get attention. Yet, Shanks simply told him that he wasn't ready. He pointed out that Luffy, who was only seven years old, couldn't even swim. Feeling frustrated, Luffy stomped away into a room filled with treasure chests. Among the treasures, he noticed a small, peculiar box. His curiosity got the best of him, and he opened the box. Inside, he found a strange fruit, unlike any he had seen before. Despite his hunger, Luffy decided to take a bite of this mysterious fruit. Meanwhile, Shanks was dealing with a pirate named Higuma who came to their hangout to seek trouble. Even though the guy deserved to be clapped, Shanks doesn't fight back. Luffy couldn't contain his frustration with Shanks and called him a coward. He thought a true man would have fought back against those bandits. Shanks tried to explain, but Luffy was too upset to listen. He angrily left the bar, but Shanks grabbed his arm to stop him. Yet, Luffy's arm started stretching like rubber. This change in Luffy was because he had eaten a special fruit called the gum gum fruit, which was known as a devil fruit. Since that day, Luffy has trained to control his new powers and become the toughest pirate. The waitress warns him it's super dangerous. She says each devil fruit gives you special powers but makes you weak in water. Luffy doesn't really get how dangerous it is and thinks he'll be a valuable helper for Shanks. But then, Shanks shows up and tells Luffy he's gotta leave to look for the One Piece and won't come back. Later, Kaguma and his gang returned, demanding their drinks, and Luffy didn't like how they treated Shanks. He got mad and told Higuma off, which made Higuma really angry. Higuma picked up Luffy, looking like he was about to hurt him. But then, Shanks showed up and told Higuma to let Luffy go. This started a big fight. But in all the chaos, Higuma managed to grab Luffy and escape on a small boat. Higuma wanted to get rid of Luffy for good, so he took him out to sea. But then, a huge sea monster called the Lord of the Coast showed up. It capsized the boat and ate Higuma. Luffy was in the water and couldn't swim. That's when Shanks came to the rescue. He pulled Luffy out of the water just in time. The Lord of the Coast tried to attack them, but Shanks stared it down and told it to go away. And you know what? The giant sea monster actually listened to him. Luffy was so relieved that he hugged Shanks, but then he noticed something sad. Shanks had lost his left arm when the sea monster attacked, but Shanks didn't seem to mind. He was just happy that Luffy was safe. Yet, a few hours later, it was Shanks' time to go. Shanks says bye to Luffy's hometown and talks about how much he'll miss him. Luffy finally realizes he's not ready to join Shanks' crew but promises that someday he'll be a pirate captain with his own ship and a crew that looks out for each other. He swears they'll be the best pirates in the world, and that's how he'll become the Pirate King. Shanks gives Luffy his straw hat, the most important thing to him, and asks Luffy to give it back when they meet again, after Luffy becomes a great pirate. Now ten years into the present, there's a small boat, and Luffy's on it. He talks to a seagull about how red-haired Shanks used to tell him pirate stories, making him want to be a navigator. Even though he can't swim, Luffy's dead set on finding One Piece and being the Pirate King. But to do that, he knows he needs like ten people on his crew, which won't be easy. So, he invites the bloody seagull to join his crew. Then, splash, his boat's sinking, and he hides in a barrel to stay safe. But that lands him in a big pirate fight. One of them is Alvida, and there's a reward for catching her. She tells her crew to jump on the other ship. While they're grabbing stuff from the ship, they ask the other crew where this pirate hunter, Zoro, is. But they find out he's chilling on Sixus Island. Alvida gets nervous cause she thought Zoro was after her, but her crew says she's not even worth hunting. She gets super mad and smacks one of them, so Kobe, the nerd guy among pirates, has to scrub the ship's deck as punishment. At night, Kobe's doing his cleaning thing when he hears a noise from a barrel. He freaks out when Luffy pops out. 
After calming Kobe down, Luffy's like, got any food? When he figures out he's on a pirate ship, he gets all excited and calls himself a pirate. But Kobe's not so sure, cause pirates are usually bad guys. Luffy tells him the pirates he knows aren't like that. He starts explaining his story of how he tried to cut his face to prove to Shanks that he was ready to become a pirate. Kobe's surprised and asks why he wants to be a pirate. Luffy says it's cause being a pirate means being free. Kobe's like, but Alvida's crew has no freedom. So Luffy's like, then leave and follow your dreams, just like I'm chasing one piece on the Grand Line. Next thing, Kobe helps Luffy escape from Alvida's ship, but they get caught. Alvida thinks Luffy's a bounty hunter, but he says no way, he's gonna be the Pirate King soon. Everybody laughs at that. Alvida gets mad and attacks, but Luffy's got some crazy powers and takes her down. Then, Luffy and Kobe make a run for it. Meanwhile, over on Sixus Island, Zoro meets Mr. Seven, who's been chasing him for three days. Mr. Seven wants Zoro to join his gang, the Baroque Works, but Zoro says a hard no. So Mr. Seven tries to fight, but Zoro's skills are too good, and he wins easy. Back with Luffy, he and Kobe are sailing, and Kobe's amazed to see Luffy stretch like rubber. Luffy says he ate a weird fruit when he was little, the Gamu Gamu fruit, and now he can stretch his whole body. As they figure out what to do next, Kobe talks about his dream of joining the Marines but feels like it's dumb. Luffy tells him he'll help and promises to take him to a Marines base. Over in the East Blue, there's a girl who acts like she needs help after pirates attacked. But it's a trick, and she's trying to steal their ship. At the Marines base, Luffy and Kobe check things out and see that there are lots of pirates there. During lunchtime, Luffy comes up with a plan to sneak in, but suddenly, Zoro shows up. That girl who stole the boat is there too. Later, a girl named Rika tries to give some food to Zoro, but she bumps into a guy who gets mad at her. Zoro gets angry when he sees the guy throw away her food, and he demands an apology. The guy tries to fight Zoro, but Zoro wins super easy. Even when the marines try to stop him, Zoro beats them too. Luffy's just watching in awe. Zoro goes up to the son of Captain Morgan, who he fought before, and asks for the money he's owed. But Morgan's son tries to get Zoro to join them. Zoro says no, so Morgan decides to lock him up and punish him for seven days in the courtyard. The next day, Morgan's son taunts Zoro, but Zoro says when he gets out, the son will be begging for his life. Later, Luffy goes to Zoro and asks him to join his crew cause he's a great fighter. At first, Zoro says no cause he's just a pirate hunter, but Luffy asks if that's really what he wants, and he lets Zoro go without wanting anything back. Zoro's surprised. Meanwhile, that girl from earlier sneaks into the Marines base looking for maps of the Grand Line. She has to fight two Marines. While she's hiding, Luffy shows up and thinks she's a Marine at first. The girl tries to trick Luffy by pretending she's a Marine, but he's too smart for that. He heard them talking and accuses her of trying to swipe his map. They argue for a bit, and then Luffy leaves. But the girl follows him and finds out he wants to go to Morgan's office to get his map, even if he has to fight for it. Then, surprise, they bump into Captain Morgan. Meanwhile, Zoro's trying to get his swords back. The girl's trying to make Morgan think she's a Marine, but he's wondering why he's never seen her before. She says she's Corporal Nami, transferred from Unit 77 to be under his command. Nami tricks Morgan, and after he leaves, she shows Luffy the key she swiped from the captain. Luffy figures out she's a thief and asks her to join his crew but she says no cause she hates pirates. They get to the captain's office and find the map of the Grand Line. But then, an alarm goes off, which means they've been found out. Morgan comes back, so Luffy uses his strength to open a big safe. They fall into the base courtyard and have to fight lots of marines. At first, Zoro thinks about running, but he decides to help Luffy. Morgan shows up, thinking he can beat them like he did with other pirates. During the fight, Zoro fights with three swords, and Luffy's amazed to see one in his mouth. They team up, and Luffy uses his Gamu Gamu Whip to beat Morgan. Now, Nami says they need to move the safe. Zoro's super strong and carries it to Nami's ship. Luffy says they're a crew now, but they tell him there's no such crew. While Nami and Zoro get things ready, Luffy says they can't go without his friend. But Zoro tells him they're running out of time cause the Marines will be there soon. All of a sudden, Captain Morgan's son shows up and tries to threaten them with his weapon. But Zoro and Luffy just make fun of him. Then, Kobe shows up and beats him with one punch. He tells Luffy that he's decided to become a Marine. Kobe's sad cause they'll be enemies when they meet next time. But until then, they're friends. Luffy smiles and says goodbye. On another note, the crew on the HQ-3 ship is sailing. And Garp gets a call that pirates attacked Shelltown and took some important stuff. He changes his plans and goes to Shelltown cause a pirate with a straw hat stole a map of the Grand Line. 
Meanwhile, somewhere else, there's a pirate named Buggy. One of his crew tells him what happened in Shell Town, and Buggy finds out they took his map. He laughs and decides he's gotta get it back, no matter who he has to fight. In the present, Nami's trying to open the safe and gets mad cause Luffy's being noisy. Luffy's all excited about their first pirate loot and comes close to check if the safe's open. Nami gets annoyed and hits him, almost making his straw hat fall into the sea. Luffy gets really mad and tells her not to mess with his hat. Nami finally opens the safe, but when Zoro sees it's just a map, he's like, is that it? Nami explains that finding the map to the Grand Line is super valuable. Luffy's pumped about the map but says he can't read it and thinks they need a navigator. Nami's surprised and starts teaching them about the seas. She tells them the world is split into four parts by a narrow land called the Red Line. Right in the middle is the Grand Line, where there are awesome treasures and big dangers. Luffy says they'll find the One Piece there, and Zoro, who hunted pirates looking for it, asks what it is. Luffy says it's Gold Roger's treasure, hidden in the Grand Line. But then, they get attacked, and they think it's the Marines. Luffy sees his friends passing out from the gas and hides the map inside himself before he faints. He looks out the window and sees pirates getting on their ship. Later, they wake up and find out they're prisoners. Nami's worried about the map, but Luffy says it's safe in his belly. Zoro tries to find a way out, and Luffy tells him they were taken by pirates before they passed out. Zoro's happy cause they're easy to beat, but Luffy remembers what Shanks taught him and wants to talk to these pirates. They get let go and realize they're part of a circus show, watched by other prisoners. Then, Buggy shows up, and Luffy recognizes him from a wanted poster. Buggy introduces himself but gets mad cause he thinks Luffy's making fun of his nose. Buggy spills the beans that he had been planning for months to steal the map, but then three nobodies snatched it right under his nose. Luffy's like, I'm not a nobody, and introduces himself to Buggy. The clown just laughs at Luffy wanting to be the Pirate King, thinking that cause he's famous, he's gonna find the One Piece. But Luffy says, no way, I'm gonna find it first. Zoro decides to break in and tells everyone to drop their weapons, and he might let them live. Buggy makes fun of him cause he doesn't like to share the spotlight, and says he's gonna clap them. Scared, Nami makes a deal with the clown and says she can do something really weird for his circus. She throws Luffy's hat to make him use his power, and while he's surprised, they run away. When they leave the tent, Nami sees everything's a mess, and she gets captured again. She asks Buggy why he's doing all this, but he just wants the map and tries to get answers from Luffy. Meanwhile, Kobe's getting ready for his first day in the Marines, and they see Vice Admiral Garp show up. Morgan decides to lie and says nothing happened with the Vice Admiral, and he yells at his son for letting the others escape. Inside Buggy's tent, Nami tells Zoro what she saw when she left. Zoro's not happy cause she tried to leave them. Nami says she thinks she can free herself but needs his trust. Zoro doesn't have a choice, so he agrees. While they're trying to break free, they hear Luffy screaming cause Buggy's torturing him. When Buggy takes Luffy's hat and talks about a pirate who had one like it, Luffy gets super mad. Buggy says he used to be on Shanks' crew, and they were friends until Shanks betrayed him. Luffy's furious that Buggy's saying bad stuff about Shanks and even more upset when he sees Buggy wants to hurt a kid. He breaks loose and attacks Buggy, ripping his head off. But here's the crazy part. Buggy ate a devil fruit too, the chop chop fruit, so he can come apart and put himself back together. A guy named Kabaji beats up Zoro cause he clapped Kabaji's brother back in the Goa Kingdom. Kabaji starts throwing knives at Zoro while he's tied to a spinning wheel. Back at the Marines base, Kobe's super nervous cause Vice Admiral Garp wants to see him. Garp asks Kobe about the pirate he was seen with, and Kobe spills everything, including Luffy's name and his dream. Garp believes him and encourages Kobe to find the pirate named Luffy with him. Now, Luffy's stuck in a tank with water, and he could drown. Buggy wants the map and says he'll spare Luffy's life if he gives it up and joins his crew. But Luffy says no way. Buggy can't figure out why Luffy wouldn't want to be a servant of the future pirate king that everyone will love. But Luffy asks about Buggy's dream, and this makes Buggy start filling the tank faster. Luffy remembers when he was a kid and fell in the sea. Shanks saved him and scared away a sea monster just by looking at it. But Luffy saw that Shanks lost his arm because of it, and he blames himself for that. Back in the present, while their friends are being tortured, Nami gets free and saves Zoro. Now they gotta save Luffy. Buggy finds out his guys got beat, and he sees Luffy spit out the map. But to get it, he has to fight the Straw Hat Pirates crew. Buggy starts attacking and hurting Luffy a lot. Luffy's crew works together to trap different parts of Buggy so he can't put himself back together. Buggy's all messed up and can't connect his body parts. He insults Luffy a lot, but Luffy says he's gonna be the Pirate King and uses his special attack to send Buggy flying. 
Luffy gives the map to Nami cause she's the navigator, and then he frees the prisoners. They're confused and think maybe these new guys are their new captors, but Luffy says they're different pirates. Meanwhile, over at the Marines base, Vice Admiral Garp talks to his crew about corruption. He says the new recruits didn't mess up, but he blames General Morgan, the boss of the base, for what went wrong. Garp says he's gonna lead the hunt for the pirates who attacked the base and bring the new recruits with him to show all pirates what happens when you mess with the marines. In another part of town, the villagers want to give Luffy and his crew supplies to say thanks. But at first, Luffy says no cause he thinks they need it more. Eventually, they take some food and say goodbye to the village. We see Nami fixing Luffy's hat, and he's really happy about it. Zoro wonders if every day is gonna be as crazy as this one and Luffy says some words from Shanks that make Zoro pay attention. Then, we find out Nami is betraying her crewmates as she tells someone she got the map. Now, we jump back seven years to Syrup Village, where there's this boy who keeps warning everyone about pirates coming, but it's always a false alarm. People start thinking he's not believable anymore cause no pirates have shown up for years. But Yuzop, that's the boy's name, he believes that one day, pirates will really come, and he'll be the one to protect everyone. Back on the sea, Nami looks at the map and gets surprised, but Luffy stops her to show the pirate flag he made. Nami doesn't want to be called a pirate and says they can't put that flag on their ship. But then Zoro tells Nami something's leaking in the cabin, and she's worried cause her communication stuff is broken. She thinks Zoro did it, but he says he didn't. Luffy says they need a better ship and asks where they can find one. Nami takes the map and says the best place to go is Gecko Island. Meanwhile, Garp's crew keeps looking for Luffy's crew. Morgan's son asks Kobe about how they ended up here, and then Garp shows up where the new recruits are and praises Kobe a lot for the knots he made. The Straw Hat crew finally gets to Gecko Island, and Zoro sees that Buggy is worth 15 million berries. He complains that they should have brought Buggy's head to get the reward, but Luffy reminds him that no one would pay cause Zoro is wanted by the Marines too. Then Nami shows up and says this village is known for its ships. Next, we see that Buggy gets all ready for action but gets mad when someone from Arlong's crew shows up at his tent. He doesn't want to meet this person, but the Arlong crew member beats him easily and captures him. In the village, the gang checks out the pier and Luffy talks about his dream ship. Nami asks why they should steal a fancy ship, but Luffy says they won't steal. So, Nami and Zoro decide to stick to the plan while Luffy goes to find his own way. Luffy finds his dream ship and sees Yuzop working on it. Yuzop tells them about the ship's cool features. Zoro and Nami arrive, and Luffy tells them he found the perfect ship. Yuzop says he'll sell it to them, but then he says it's not for sale, and he's not the seller. But he knows the owner of the ship and all the boats in the harbor so they can make a deal with her. Now we switch to Garp's ship, where he's playing board games with Kobe. Finally, Yuzop takes Luffy and the gang to Kaya's house, but Luffy wonders why they can't use the front door and if Yuzop is Kaya's friend. Yuzop gives a weird excuse, which Zoro questions, but Nami says it doesn't matter how they get in as long as they do. Then, Butchai attacks Yuzop for not being welcome, but Yuzop says he brought a gift for Kaya. Kaya comes in, says hi to Yuzop, and he wishes her a happy birthday. But Klaihador scolds Yuzop for showing up unannounced. Kaya asks Yuzop why he's here, and he tells a fib, saying he brought his crew today. Luffy and his gang are surprised, but Kaya invites them to eat because it's her birthday. Playhador tells everyone to go to the guest room to freshen up. Then, we see Yuzop sneaking through a secret passage to visit Kaya because he wants to give her a big pearl as a birthday present. He tells her a tale about how he got it, and Kaya is impressed by the story and enjoys hearing it. But suddenly, she starts coughing, and Yuzop worries about her because she's sick. In the next scene, Luffy's crew is deciding what to wear, and Zoro is suspicious of the butler. Luffy thinks Kaya is very lonely and is trying to figure out how to convince her to give him the ship. Nami doesn't think it's possible, so Luffy suggests a bet. If he can change Kaya's mind, they'll follow Nami's plan, and she agrees. During dinner, Yuzop tells stories to Luffy, and Nami talks to Kaya's money manager. Suddenly, Kaya shows up with her butler. Zoro asks if they know each other, but the butler denies it and invites everyone to the dining room, where there's a big feast that gets Luffy all excited. Yuzop reminds Luffy that he had something to tell Kaya, and Luffy asks if she's the owner of the shipyard. Kaya says that at midnight tonight, she'll be the sole owner after her parents pass away. Luffy is happy to hear this because they want to buy a ship from her. She mentions that Yuzop told her they're sailors, but Luffy corrects her, saying they're pirates, which surprises everyone. He even tells her about their adventures. Kaya is thrilled because it sounds just like the adventures of her friend Yuzop. Luffy shares his plan with Kaya about going to the Grand Line while walking on the table. 
she's amazed that he wants to become the Pirate King and listens closely as Luffy explains that he wants to take care of his ship. But Clahador interrupts, grumbling that Usopp brought a bunch of rowdy folks and tries to kick everyone out of the house. However, Kaya allows them to stay, although she herself must leave for a bit. Meanwhile, Morgan's son disrupts Garp and Kobe's game session because they discovered remnants of a ship with a straw hat symbol. Garp orders an inspection of Gecko Island, one of the closest islands to their location, and assigns Kobe to lead the mission, which makes Morgan's son quite upset. In the next scene, Kaya's treasurer, Mary, questions Clahador. He finds it strange that she wants to transfer ownership of the shipyard to him. Clahador tries to convince him that it's only natural since he has been looking after her for three years. However, Mary wants to hear it directly from Kaya and doesn't want anyone taking advantage of her anymore. Clahador reveals his true intentions and does something terrible to Mary. Switching to Buggy, he feels trapped and scared because they have him cornered. He tries to make jokes, but Arlong approaches, demanding tribute because Buggy is profiting from his sea territory. Buggy tries to change the subject by telling Arlong about someone who has disrespected him, a kid with a straw hat named Luffy, who wrecked a marine base and stole a map of the Grand Line. Arlong grumbles about Luffy's quest for the One Piece, so Buggy offers a deal to spare his life in exchange for finding Luffy. Meanwhile, as Zoro and Luffy embark on their search for the kitchen, Nami is caught stealing from Kaya's house. Instead of getting angry, Kaya starts a conversation with Nami. She confides in Nami, expressing her fatigue with people treating her delicately and feeling sorry for her. At last, Luffy and Zoro arrive in the kitchen and find Yuzop, who also can't sleep. Yuzop asks Luffy about his adventures and admits that while he'd like to join them, he feels he needs to stay for Kaya's sake. Meanwhile, Kaya shares with Nami that she has known Yuzop for a long time, especially since her parents passed away. She talks about all the kindness Yuzop has shown her. Yuzop confides in Luffy, considering Kaya his best friend and wanting to help her in any way possible. Nami and Kaya's conversation turns to their family backgrounds. Kaya reveals that her parents died at sea and asks if Nami has experienced a similar loss, to which Nami responds that she hasn't. This leads to some playful teasing between them. Simultaneously, Yuzop engages with the rest of Luffy's crew, showcasing his sharpshooting abilities, which he claims to have inherited from his father. When he mentions his father, Luffy mentions knowing him because he was once part of Shank's crew. However, upon Zoro's request for a drink, Yuzop takes him to where the wines are kept, and there they stumble upon Mary's lifeless body. Clahador, who turns out to be the captain of the Black Cat Pirates, appears and triggers Zoro's memory. A battle ensues, and although he defeats Zoro, Yuzop manages to escape. They decide to let him go because they believe no one will believe his account of what happened. Nami says her goodbyes to Kaya, who hands over everything she had stolen and hidden inside her pillowcase. Later that night, Clahador's henchmen try to get rid of the bodies of their fallen foes. Meanwhile, Yuzop rushes to the village seeking help but struggles to convince anyone to believe his story. This situation reminds him of a similar experience from his childhood. Back when he was a child, Yuzop eagerly awaited his father's return with his pirate crew. He watched as his mother, who was very ill, scolded him and reassured him that she would get better once his father came home. She did her best to comfort him, but their food supply dwindled, and sadly, she passed away. In the present, Yuzop sits on the ground, tears streaming down his face, unable to fathom why no one believes him, even when children are typically trusted. Suddenly, Kobe appears before him and expresses his belief in Yuzop's words. In the next scene, Zoro awakens in a pit and comes across Mary's lifeless body, causing him to recall the recent events. Upon encountering Kobe, Yuzop decides to confide in him, sharing everything that's been happening, including revealing Captain Kuro's true identity. Morgan's son, skeptical of Yuzop's claims, finds them hard to believe, as he believes his father clapped Kuro years ago and thinks Kuro has no connection to the Straw Hat Pirates. However, when Yuzop mentions Luffy, Kobe grows concerned for his safety and offers to help. Inside the house, Nami desperately searches for Luffy and eventually discovers him in the kitchen, unconscious after indulging in Kaya's food. She hears voices approaching and attempts to hide Luffy, but her efforts prove futile. Nami quietly observes what the pirates are up to and realizes that Luffy has been poisoned. She also overhears Clahador ordering his servants to dispose of Luffy down a well, and she learns that Zoro has been defeated. Meanwhile, Kobe and his group arrive at the house and are greeted by Clahador. Clahador expresses regret, stating that Yuzop has always been a liar who never recovered from his mother's death. Yuzop insists on a checkup, and Kobe examines the butler but doesn't find the claws described by Luffy's friend. 
Proby consults with Clahador, mentioning Luffy's name as a wanted fugitive. Clahador recalls the name from one of the criminals introduced by Yuzo, who had drunk all the wine and passed out. One of the criminal's subordinates is looking after him, and Clahador invites them to wait for his arrival. Clahador instructs Buchai to bring the straw hat pirate to the marines. Usopp tries to explain to Kobe that there must be a mistake, as Luffy is nothing like the notorious pirate Kuro. However, Kobe apologizes and admits that without evidence, there's nothing they can do. Eventually, Clahador hands Luffy over to the marines, but Kobe isn't satisfied and wishes to ask the butler more questions. Meanwhile, Nami defeats Kuro's other henchwoman, creating a commotion that catches Kobe's attention. However, Clahador dismisses Kobe and shuts the doors, as he must attend to his duties. Zoro struggles to climb out of the pit where he was thrown, and memories of his training in Shimitsuki village from seven years ago flood his mind. He remembers how he was constantly defeated during his training, which frustrates him, especially when he recalls his sparring sessions with Kuina. She had always wanted to help him improve, even though Zoro had initially refused to listen. He had promised her that one day he would surpass her and become the world's greatest swordsman. Zoro couldn't understand why she always won, and she accepted his challenge to spar with real katanas. Back in the present, Yuzop attempts to talk to Kaya and inform her about the dangerous situation, but she finds it hard to believe. Clahador has always been there to take care of her, and it doesn't make sense to her that he would want to harm her or marry. Yuzop insists that everything he's saying is the truth, but Kaya reacts by hitting him and asking him to leave because she's struggling to distinguish between reality and the stories she's hearing. Yuzop, determined not to run away anymore, declares that he won't leave until she is completely safe. As midnight arrives, Clahador informs his accomplices that they no longer need to pretend or hide. They can proceed with their plan to clap Kaya. Following his captain's orders, Butchai closes the entire house to prevent any interference. In Kaya's room, both she and Yuzop are startled when someone tries to open the door. However, when it finally opens, they are relieved to see Nami standing there. Nami explains that she's relieved they are still alive. Kaya, still unsure of what's happening, thinks that Yuzop must have convinced Nami to tell this story, but Yuzop denies any knowledge of such a plan. Meanwhile, Kuro and his crew thoroughly search the entire house for the kids. Kuro believes that now is the perfect opportunity to eliminate Kaya because they are all alone. However, when he reaches Kaya's room, he discovers that she is no longer there. Kaya finds herself wandering through the service corridors of the house, desperately searching for a way to escape. Meanwhile, Yuzop, accompanied by the girls, manages to slip away from Kuro's menacing presence. Kaya points out a lever that needs to be activated to open the house's doors. At the same time, Zoro, who had fainted earlier, regains consciousness. He recalls the painful memory of when his sensei informed him about Kuina's tragic death. At her farewell, Zoro had made a heartfelt request to inherit her sword, and although his master was initially hesitant, Zoro reminded him of the promise they had made with Kuina. These memories serve as motivation for Zoro as he searches for a way out of the pit. Meanwhile, Kobe listens to Luffy's words, but Helmeppo, growing annoyed, threatens to harm Luffy. Suddenly, Zoro appears and takes down all the marines, effectively freeing Luffy. Kobe attempts to intervene because, by marine orders, they are under arrest. However, Luffy approaches Kobe and acknowledges his duty. Luffy instructs his friend to return to his marine duties as he and Zoro need to help their other friends. He advises Kobe not to try to stop them. Kobe accepts Luffy's words, and they watch as Luffy and Zoro head back towards the house. Inside the house, Kiro manages to locate the room where Kaya and the others are hiding. He harshly criticizes the young girl, implying that she has squandered countless opportunities and is nothing more than a pathetic brat. Kuro sees her actions as a form of revenge after he spent years caring for her and enduring her constant complaints. He reveals his pent-up frustrations over the years but didn't anticipate Zoro and Luffy's unexpected return. Kaya, having overheard Kiro's words, becomes determined to confront the pirate. However, Kiro swiftly captures her. Witnessing his friend's capture, Yuzop bravely attempts to attack Kiro, but the pirate proves to be too formidable and easily defeats him. In another part of the house, Butchai and Sham launch an attack on Zoro, which leads to a fierce battle between them. Zoro is locked in a tough fight against the two henchmen, showcasing his impressive swordsmanship. Meanwhile, Kuro has sinister plans to end Kaya's life, but before he can carry out his dreadful scheme, Luffy intervenes. Luffy makes it clear that no one messes with his friends. He attempts to strike Kuro, but his attack misses. Kuro taunts Straw Hat, believing that Luffy is no match for him. He questions Luffy's right to call himself a pirate since he has spent relatively little time at sea. Unlike Kuro, 
who was a captain for an extended period. Turo reflects on his own life, filled with worries and constant vigilance against betrayal and threats, and asks Luffy if that's the kind of life he desires. Luffy responds with confidence, stating that he doesn't need to worry about his crew because they watch out for each other. However, Kuro remains skeptical, admitting to having clapped numerous crew members in the past. Luffy clarifies that he's not a pirate solely to raid villages, but because he seeks adventure and freedom. This statement elicits a cynical laugh from Kuro, who argues that true freedom cannot exist when there's a bounty on one's head. Luffy counters by suggesting that Kuro has abandoned his dreams and no longer has the right to call himself a pirate. Kuro, infuriated, prepares for a more serious battle against Luffy. Meanwhile, Zoro demonstrates his remarkable swordsmanship by taking control of Kuro's henchmen with just two swords. Luffy continues his battle against Kuro, displaying his incredible skills. He even uses his signature move, the Gamu Gamu Bell, to deal a powerful blow to Kuro's face. Usopp and the girls watch with joy as Luffy defeats the formidable pirate. As the sun rises, the group reaches the main entrance of the house, where Zoro has already defeated Kuro's henchmen. Nami suggests a quick escape because the marines are closing in, but Luffy is uncertain about their next move. He doesn't know where to go and doesn't even have a ship. However, Kaya corrects him and reveals they do have a ship. Luffy's face lights up with a smile, knowing he has convinced the young woman. Standing before the ship he had chosen, Luffy remarks that it looks like his friend Mary. Kaya explains that Mary was in charge of the family business and was her parents' favorite colleague. Luffy believes that the ship carries the memory of her parents and decides to name it Going Mary. These words fill Kaya with happiness, and she decides to give the ship to Luffy, much to his excitement. Luffy turns to Usopp and instructs him to gather his belongings, but Usopp is puzzled. Luffy extends an invitation for Usopp to join his crew, impressed by Usopp's skills in defending his friends and knowing that he's the kind of person he wants in his crew. He mentions Usopp's father, Yasop, as an expert sniper and emphasizes how much he needs someone like him. However, Usopp initially refuses, feeling a strong attachment to Syrup Village and a deep sense of responsibility towards Kaya. Zoro, persisting, encourages Usopp to accept the offer. Luffy explains that Usopp's bravery and loyalty to his friends are what make him a valuable addition to the crew. Usopp hesitates but ultimately decides to decline Luffy's offer. Instead, he chooses to stay in Syrup Village to take care of Kaya, who he believes needs him. Kaya approaches Usopp and expresses her gratitude for being a wonderful friend. She shares her newfound ambition to study and become a doctor, realizing that it's time for her to take charge of her life and pursue her own dreams. Usopp understands her decision, and as they bid their farewells, Kaya gives him a clap and tells him she'll eagerly await the stories of Captain Usopp. Luffy becomes a bit worried and asks if they know he's the captain, but Nami hushes him and suggests letting Usopp be the captain for the day. They set sail on the going merry, and Luffy proudly tells Nami that he was right, but she advises him not to get too comfortable. Meanwhile, we see Kuro rowing in a small boat, away from the island. Back at the Marines base, Kobe apologizes to Vice Admiral Garp for failing in his mission. However, Garp reassures him, saying not to be too hard on himself because he did manage to get the Straw Hat crew off the island. Later, Usopp presents his flag for the crew which sparks a playful argument between him and Luffy about who the real captain is. Zoro and Nami share a laugh at the amusing exchange. However, their lighthearted moment is interrupted when they come under attack from Garp. Luffy, using his spyglass, realizes that it's his grandfather who is attacking them, which surprises everyone. Here, they learn that Garp, the vice admiral, is Luffy's grandfather. Luffy orders his crew to retaliate against the marines, but they discover that Usopp has no experience with cannons. Garp then commands them to stop, but Luffy refuses to follow his orders. Using his incredible physical strength, Garp launches a cannonball, but Luffy uses his gum gum powers to enlarge himself and deflect the cannonball, smashing one of the enemy ship's masts and causing significant trouble for them. The Straw Hat crew celebrates this small victory, and Luffy instructs Nami to navigate them out. Nami takes control of the ship and sails it into thick fog to hide from the marines. The crew checks the ship for damage and finds that it's minimal. They wonder where Luffy is because they need to plan their next moves. Usopp mentions that Luffy is at the front of the ship and hasn't spoken since the incident with Vice Admiral Garp. Nami thinks it's essential to talk to Luffy about what happened, especially the fact that the Vice Admiral is his grandfather. Zoro and Usopp don't see it as a big deal, but Nami believes it's important. She decides to send Zoro to talk to Luffy because he's the first officer. Zoro approaches Luffy to see what he's doing, 
and Luffy says he's just checking his hat. Zoro asks if he wants to discuss what happened, but Luffy declines and goes back to his thoughts. Suddenly, Luffy's nose catches the scent of food, and he leads his crew to a place called Berady, a floating restaurant on the sea. Luffy insists on stopping for a meal. However, when they enter, they're told they need a reservation, and the nearest available one is three weeks away. Nami, using her wit, bribes the waiter, who quickly finds them a table. While they wait, they wonder what kind of food this restaurant serves. In the kitchen, they see a chef meticulously preparing dishes. However, he's scolded for slowing down the kitchen line due to his imaginative cooking. He submits his order list, but the head chef with a peg leg refuses to serve the dish. This upsets the chef, who believes the restaurant is insulting the meat with its menu. His boss scolds him and orders him to leave the kitchen to serve tables. As he leaves the kitchen, he comes across two pirates fighting and intervenes to remind them of the restaurant's rules. When they don't listen, he uses his leg strikes to easily defeat them, leaving Luffy impressed with his skills. The waiter at Berady introduces himself as Sanji and takes the straw hat crew's orders. Luffy, with his usual appetite, orders a bit of everything. Nami is annoyed by Sanji's flirtatious behavior, while Zoro requests some beer. Usopp adds two more beers to the order, and Luffy, in contrast, asks for a glass of milk. Sanji also asks Nami what she'd like, and she simply asks for a glass of water. As Sanji walks away, the crew playfully teases Nami about the waiter's advances. Meanwhile, Vice Admiral Garp is informed that their ship has suffered significant damage, and it will take two days to make it seaworthy again. Kobe suggests seeking help from Battalion 67, which is nearby, but Garp firmly declines, insisting they can handle the situation on their own. He returns to his office and contacts Mihawk, a powerful pirate with a cancelled capture order. Garp assigns Mihawk a mission to deal with a young pirate aspirant named Luffy, warning him not to underestimate the young man. Next, we see Mihawk effortlessly destroying Don Krieg's ship with a single strike. Don Krieg questions Mihawk's motives but then attacks him, only to fail miserably. Mihawk quickly dispatches Don Krieg and returns to his conversation with Vice Admiral Garp, waiting for further instructions. Back at the restaurant, the crew is stuffed from their hearty meal and Luffy suggests a toast. However, Nami isn't keen on toasting, considering their recent near-drowning experience. She also questions why Luffy didn't mention his Vice Admiral grandfather earlier. Sanji arrives with the bill which Luffy pays by signing it with his name. This irks the owner of the Bear 80 because Luffy seems unaware of the restaurant's rules, they don't offer credit. Luffy insists the food is paid for, he just hasn't given them the money yet. He adds it to his tab, declaring himself the future pirate king and promising to repay it with interest when he finds the one piece. However, the owner disagrees and sentences Luffy to pay his bill by washing dishes. Luffy grumbles about the amount, but the owner reveals that his tab is equivalent to a year of dishwashing. At night, Nami worries about the Vice Admiral's presence. After discussing it with her friends, she decides to cover the next round of expenses and seizes the opportunity to ask about a safe route to Konomi Island. During the night, Kobe inquires with Helmeppo if he's familiar with Mihawk. Helmeppo confirms that Mihawk is the greatest swordsman in history and one of the seven warlords of the sea. These seven pirates were notorious troublemakers worldwide. But instead of fighting them endlessly, the marines made them allies in exchange for freedom to handle their dirty work. Kobe can hardly believe the shocking revelation. While scrubbing dishes, Luffy strikes up a chat with Sanji, who boasts about being the finest cook in the East Blue. Luffy agrees because he enjoyed the rejected dish and can't fathom why Zeph, the owner, forces Sanji to work as a waiter. Sanji believes it's because Zeph is envious of him. He then shares his dream of finding a mythical place in the sea called the All Blue, where unknown ingredients await. Luffy encourages Sanji to chase his dream. Their conversation is interrupted by a hungry marine, whom Sanji intends to feed despite the owner's objections. Witnessing Sanji's kindness, Luffy invites him to join his crew. Next, we see Kobe questioning Garp about sending Mihawk after Luffy. Garp, sensing Kobe's unease, offers him a drink and confesses that the world isn't always fair, and not everyone can be treated equally. That's why the Marines exist, to maintain order and prevent chaos, even if it means living with some unfairness. At the Bear 80, a slightly tipsy Usopp starts bragging about his abilities without realizing Mihawk is nearby. Later, he tries to introduce Mihawk to his friends, but Zoro recognizes the legendary swordsman. Zoro stands his ground and challenges Mihawk to a duel to the death, declaring his ambition to become the world's greatest swordsman. Mihawk accepts the challenge, promising to end Zoro's journey. 
While Luffy continues washing dishes, he hears Zeph arriving and confronts him for trying to crush Sanji's dreams. He tells Zeph about Sanji's act of kindness with the hungry man, breaking the restaurant's rules. But before Zeph can respond, Usopp rushes in, alerting Luffy that they're facing a problem. Luffy enters the room where Zoro is getting ready, and Nami scolds him, saying that Zoro can't defeat Mihawk. Both Nami and Usopp ask Luffy to intervene, but Luffy agrees with Nami and encourages Zoro to reconsider. Zoro, however, remains determined, explaining that his dream is to become the world's greatest swordsman, and to achieve that dream, he must defeat Mihawk. Nami continues to plead with Zoro to change his mind, and Luffy stresses that he can't interfere with someone else's dream. Nami's persistence leads Zoro to question why she's so concerned about him giving up the duel. She responds that he's her friend, but Zoro reminds her of her earlier claim that she has no friends. The next day, Nami prepares to leave while the others accompany Zoro. When Mihawk sees Luffy, he complains about the marines seeking his help for such a small package. The duel commences, and Zoro attacks with his two swords, but Mihawk effortlessly counters every move with a small knife while taunting him. Despite his injuries, Zoro refuses to back down because of the promise he made. Impressed by Zoro's bravery, Mihawk decides to honor him by using his sword to end the battle. Zoro places his third sword in his mouth and gets ready for a fierce fight. In a fierce clash of swords, Mihawk shatters all of Zoro's swords. Mihawk still can't understand why Zoro won't give up. Suddenly, Zoro steps in front of Mihawk, signaling his surrender. Mihawk delivers a powerful blow to Zoro's chest, which worries and angers Luffy. However, Mihawk asks Luffy about his motivation, and upon hearing it, he comments that the world needs more unpredictable people like him. Before leaving, he tells Zoro to become stronger so they can face each other again. The others are concerned about their injured friend, and at that moment, Zoro makes a solemn promise that he will never disappoint Luffy again. He swears that from this day on, until he defeats Mihawk, he will never lose again. Exhausted, Zoro faints, and the crew rushes to tend to his wounds. However, Luffy goes into shock, prompting Nami to scold him and order him to return to the Baraiti to find a doctor. Back at the Baraiti, Zeph scolds Sanji for being in his kitchen, but when he learns that the kitchen manager is hungover, he accepts Sanji's help. During his shift, Zeph is demanding, but suddenly Luffy interrupts, seeking help because they need a doctor. Zeph suggests going to Konomi Island, which is two days away, but Luffy thinks it's too far. Sanji offers to help, despite Zeph's scolding for leaving. However, Zeph reconsiders and tells Sanji what he needs to find to assist Luffy's friend. Nami is annoyed when she sees Luffy back with Zeph, as they only need a doctor. However, Zeph reveals his skills as a marine doctor and explains that their friend is on the brink of death but may still have a chance to survive. He suggests they can help him by talking to him, telling him stories, or perhaps singing to him, so he feels the support of his crew. In the next scene, Mihawk pays a visit to Garp for a private conversation. Garp wonders where Luffy is, but Mihawk informs him that he let Luffy go because he's curious to see what will happen to the young man when he enters the Grand Line. Garp finds this amusing and asserts that he won't allow anything to happen to Luffy. Mihawk drops a hint that his grandson might be the one to find the One Piece. Kobe overhears this conversation and is taken aback by what he hears. Meanwhile, Sanji is busy cooking for the Straw Hat crew, although he's worried about Luffy, who silently cleans Zoro's sword, preparing it for when his friend wakes up. Usopp sadly informs Luffy that there's a chance Zoro may never wake up because of his severe injuries. However, Luffy remains optimistic, believing that Zoro is much stronger than anyone realizes. Sanji interrupts their conversation and encourages Luffy to eat. However, Luffy has a different idea. He asks Sanji to prepare Zoro's favorite food, rice balls with beer, believing it will help Zoro regain his strength. Luffy reflects on what Zoro needs most right now, concluding that rest is essential. Sanji mentions that being a captain is one of the toughest jobs in the world because captains have to make difficult decisions that set them apart from the rest of the crew. He reveals that Zeph used to be a pirate, which surprises Luffy. He's even more shocked to learn that Zeph was known as Red Leg Zeph because his boots were stained with the blood of his enemies. The story then takes us nine years back in time to when Sanji was a child aboard the passenger ship Orbit, sailing in the East Blue. Even as a young boy, Sanji was passionate about cooking and constantly tried to innovate in the kitchen. However, he received no support from those around him, and they even tried to crush his dream of reaching the legendary All Blue. Suddenly, pirates stormed the ship, and Sanji had to hide. It was during this tense moment that Zeph discovered him when Sanji tried to stop him from adding oregano to a dish. Zeph questioned him, and just as they were talking, a massive wave hit their ship, sending it sinking into the sea. 
both Sanji and Zef found themselves adrift in the open water. The following day, Sanji woke up and asked Zef what had happened. Zef explained that everyone else on their ship had perished, leaving only the two of them. Sanji wondered what they should do next, and Zef stressed the importance of waiting for another ship to come to their rescue. He showed Sanji the meager food they had salvaged and emphasized that they needed to eat it slowly to make it last. When Sanji questioned why Zef had the bigger bag of food, an annoyed Zef told him to go to the other side of the island and watch for approaching ships, as it was the only way he could be of use. Days turned into weeks, and Sanji managed to ration his food carefully. However, by the 25th day, he began to worry that their supplies would run out. He watched helplessly as a passing ship failed to notice him. As more days passed, Sanji's situation grew increasingly desperate as his provisions dwindled. On the 70th day, Sanji couldn't bear it any longer. He believed Zef must have had twice as much food and confronted him, demanding a share. He even threatened to clap Zef if he refused. However, when he reached the other side of the island with his knife, he was shocked to find that Zef's bag contained not food but treasure. Sanji learned the horrifying truth, Zef had survived by eating his own leg. Sanji couldn't comprehend why Zef had given him all the food, and Zef explained that he had been searching for the legendary All Blue his entire life. Even though his time had run out, he hoped that Sanji would continue the quest. Zef needed Sanji to survive and fulfill their shared dream. In the present, Sanji shared with the crew what it's like when someone sacrifices a limb to save another. He recounted the more than 70 days they spent on the deserted island, where Zef had always acted as their captain, guiding them through the tough times. Meanwhile, Nami was reading stories to Zoro, but Luffy interrupted, questioning the story's details. This made Nami quite angry because she believed Luffy had the chance to prevent Zoro's injury. She asked him why he didn't stop it, and Luffy simply replied that he didn't think he would lose. Nami continued to press him about his decision, and Luffy finally admitted that he would give anything to save Zoro but would never stand in the way of his dreams. Nami then revealed her own feelings, saying that her only dream was for Zoro to have a long life, not dying in his bed. Luffy persisted, causing Nami to become sad, and she left, mentioning that not everyone can pursue their dreams. In another scene, Garp confronted Kobe, revealing that he knew Luffy was his grandson. He shared a bit of his backstory with Kobe and questioned how he was handling the situation. Garp agreed with Kobe's concerns and sent him to gather the marines. The story then shifted to the Beredi, where Arlong arrived, causing quite a stir. Zef confronted him about his control over the ocean. But Arlong paid him no mind and inquired about a pirate wearing a straw hat, revealing his search for Luffy. Zef pretended not to know Luffy and offered him food, but Arlong refused and issued a menacing threat, demanding that they bring Luffy to him. Nami, who was watching from the shadows, decided it was time to make her escape. In the midst of helping Zoro, Luffy decides to speak from the heart, even though he's unsure if his heart is in the right place. As he starts talking to Zoro, Nami suddenly rushes in, alarmed and warning them that Arlong's pirates have arrived at the Beridi. This surprises Luffy, who wonders why they should leave. Nami explains that they're looking for him specifically. Sanji makes the decision to leave to protect the restaurant, and Luffy wants to go with him. However, his crew members hold him back. Luffy insists that they'll protect the Beridi, and Sanji questions why he's involving them in this fight. Luffy responds with a simple but heartfelt reason, because Sanji fed them. Nami, however, brings up the fact that Arlong has the highest bounty in the East Blue. Luffy doesn't want innocent people to suffer because of him, so he decides to go and face Arlong. When they arrive at the restaurant, they confront Arlong, who seems surprised that the pirate they're searching for is so small. Luffy mocks him for not recognizing him and asks how he found him. Arlong reveals that a friend helped him, showing that he has Buggy's head, which he had hidden an ear in Luffy's straw hat. Arlong now demands that Luffy hand over his map and half of his loot as tribute, but Luffy refuses to become Arlong's servant, and challenges him to a fight. Before they can start fighting, Zef takes a shot at the fish man, though it doesn't harm him. Sanji, seeing Zef getting hurt, attacks the fish men, but they easily overpower him. Witnessing the attack on his friend, Luffy attacks Arlong but Arlong strikes back with great force. Outside the restaurant, Arlong continues to pummel Luffy until, in a fit of anger, Luffy manages to land a hit on Arlong. But just as Arlong is about to deliver a serious blow, Nami intervenes. Nami reveals that she's part of Arlong's crew and suggests they toss Luffy into the sea. Arlong seems ready to do it, but Sanji comes to Luffy's rescue just in time. Luffy asks about Nami, and when he learns that she left, he feels really sad. 
Meanwhile, Garp congratulates his crew and tells them that the mission has changed. Now they must capture Straw Hat Luffy. Back at the Bear 80, Sanji wants to help Zeph, but Zeph refuses, thinking Sanji shouldn't waste his life. Sanji disagrees and says Zeph can't run the restaurant alone. He insists that if he dreams of the all blue, he shouldn't be stubborn and should go search for it. Eventually, Zeph gives his approval for Sanji to accompany Luffy on his journey. Luffy goes to visit Zoro again and shares his fight with Arlong, their meal together, and what happened with Nami. He feels like he messed everything up before because he didn't know what to say, but now he knows what he needs to tell her. Suddenly, Zoro complains about not being able to sleep in peace, which makes Luffy very happy. Zoro asks about Nami and reassures Luffy that it's not his fault, he was just acting as a captain. Zoro pledges his loyalty to Luffy until they find the One Piece or Die trying. The next day, the crew gets ready for their journey and they find out that Sanji will also be joining their crew. Zoro questions why a mere waiter like Sanji should come along, and as the going merry sets sail, Sanji bids farewell to Zef, expressing his gratitude for all his support and stating that he will never forget him. The crew wonders how they will find Nami, but Luffy reveals that he brought along Buggy's head to guide them to Arlong. During the voyage, Zoro confronts Buggy, expressing his hope that it's not a trap despite the deal he made with Luffy. However, Zoro ultimately places Buggy inside a barrel. Now we see that Luffy is fishing alongside Sanji, but he complains that it's taking too long for the fish to bite. However, when he starts talking about Nami, Zoro scolds Sanji because he doesn't know anything about their friend. Luffy interrupts them, saying it doesn't matter what Nami decides. He just wants to hear her side of the story. Next, Yuzop gives a warning that they've reached Konomi Island. Meanwhile, Nami reminisces about her childhood until her crewmates interrupt her by playing cards. Nami wins against one of her crewmates, who accuses her of cheating, but she defends herself, claiming she didn't cheat. Suddenly, another crew member informs Nami that Arlong is requesting her presence. She heads to the fish man's room, where she sees an old map that reminds her of her childhood when she studied it. She recalls her childhood in Kakoyasi village, about eight years ago when her mother scolded her for stealing a book with maps. But Nami, in response to the scolding, complained about being poor and claimed that was why she stole it. Her mother tells her that even though they are poor, they have a roof over their heads that keeps them as a family. However, Nami disagrees, revealing that she's not her real mother and Najiko is not her real sister. When her mother hears this, she slaps Nami, causing her to run away. Later, her mother approaches the young Nami to tell her the story of when she found her, and Najiko after her unit was defeated in Oikot. She confesses that she thought she was going to die. But when she found them, she realized there was a reason to live, so she decided to take care of them and do what's right. That's why she believes that Nami will also do what's right for her at some point. Arlong interrupts her memories to thank Nami because, thanks to her, they know the locations of every marine base and pirate fortress from here to the Goa Kingdom. She has become a valuable member of their crew, and he confesses that he once thought she wouldn't return. However, she reminds him that they have a deal, which Arlong promises to uphold. Nami hands over the map to the fishman, who says that now the fishman will dominate the seas, even the Grand Line. Seeing that Nami is uneasy, Arlong tells her not to worry, as she will have a special place in his kingdom. But before she leaves, he sends her to Kakoyasi village because they have fallen behind on their tribute payment. Nami reminds him that she is not welcome there and asks him to send another servant. However, he refuses, stating that this job requires a human touch. Next, Garp arrives at Beredi in search of the owner. Zeph is surprised to see Marines, including a Vice Admiral, here. He explains that he is retired and only a chef now. The Vice Admiral mentions that they didn't come for him, they are seeking information about Luffy. Zeph claims he can't help them because he barely remembers his regular customers. Unable to get the information they want, Zeph offers to serve them food, which Garp accepts. On the other hand, the Straw Hat crew arrives at a completely destroyed village. Luffy believes it's all Arlong's doing. Upon entering the village, they see everyone gathered trying to gather the tribute, but they are worried they haven't collected enough and ask if there's still time. At that moment, Nami interrupts them, informing them that they've run out of time. Najiko confronts her sister, who, after expressing her disdain, leaves. Nami asks Genzo if he has something for her. We then see a memory of the situation she experienced as a child when she returned the stolen book. But just when she thought everything was fine, they see Arlong attacking the village. The little girl and her mother try to escape while Arlong demonstrates his power to the entire Kakoyasi village. In the present, Nami tells Genzo that it's not enough, and they must try harder. 
She then sees Luffy and his friends in the village and questions why they are there. Luffy offers his help, but she rejects it, stating that she was never part of their crew and confesses that she only deceived them to get the map. The Straw Hat crew doesn't believe a word of what she's saying. Usopp and Zoro think she doesn't want them there, so they suggest leaving. But Sanji, along with Luffy, believes that something else is going on and wants to talk to Genzo to find out who the blue-haired woman is. Before answering, Genzo wants to know who they are, and Zoro responds that they are pirate hunters. Genzo tells them that he has seen larger and more numerous men defeated when trying to claim Arlong's bounty. Luffy says he just wants to talk to the girl with blue hair. Genzo agrees to show them the way only if they promise to leave the village. Upon arriving at the blue-haired girl's house, she greets the crew while pointing a large weapon at them and asks them to leave. Luffy wants to talk about Nami, but she recommends they stay away and confesses that she is her sister, that she is only deceiving them, and they are nothing special. Sanji, in an attempt to get her to talk, offers her food in exchange for her time and information. And finally, the blue-haired girl agrees to have dinner and talk with them. Meanwhile, Garp enjoys Zeph's food but insists on getting information about Luffy. However, the chef ignores him while opening a vintage wine to share with him. At night, in Arlong Park, they enjoy a big party. And in the end, Nami returns with the tribute from Kakoyasi Village. She wants to talk to her boss, but they tell her they'll do it tomorrow, as the village won't disappear unless they don't pay the tribute. Nami says that's exactly what she wants to discuss when they are suddenly interrupted by Marines. Captain Nezumi arrives, worried that they are causing trouble in nearby villages. Seeing that Arlong wants to bribe him, he says he now needs double what he usually offers. So, the fish man invites the captain to have a more private conversation since he's clearly ruining the party. In Kakoyasi village, the blue-haired girl enjoys Sanji's food, who promises more if she talks about Nami. Najiko tells them that on the day Arlong attacked the village, their mother tried to protect them. But upon seeing that the fish men who wanted to harm her, she and her sister came out of hiding. This led their mother to decide to pay the tribute for them even if it meant losing her life. Before Arlong clapped her, she apologized for not giving them everything they wanted or for not being a very good mother. The little girls cry for their mother as they watch the fish man shoot her. The boys are deeply affected by the story, and Luffy goes out to get some air, with Zoro following him. Luffy thinks that Nami was just a child when all of this happened. Zoro comments that she's not a child anymore and that she made a decision. He advises Luffy to forget about her, but the straw hat captain refuses to accept that Nami is not a good person. Meanwhile, Arlong negotiates with Captain Nezumi, whom he intimidates into accepting even less money. After that scene Nami tells Arlong that she has her part of the deal, but he doesn't believe she has 100 million berries and questions her about it. Nami responds that she stole that money on her own, so she wants to know if he will keep his word. Arlong orders her to bring the money by morning, and he will consider the matter closed. However, after she leaves, he sends Kirubai to find Nezumi as he has a job for him. Elsewhere, Kobe and Helmeppo are drinking at the restaurant. Helmeppo doesn't understand Garp's obsession with the straw hat, and Kobe confesses that it's because he's his grandson. After a brief conversation, the waiter tells them he could sell them information about the straw hat. Now, Zef, who is dining with Garp, confesses that he doesn't want to get involved in a family dispute but believes that Luffy is special because he reminds him of Gold Roger. Garp sadly says he doesn't want the child to end up like Roger. Suddenly, Kobe provides new information to his vice admiral, who sets a course for Konomi Island. During the night, Nami goes to search for her treasure, but when she unearths it, her sister scolds her for desecrating their mother's grave. Nami wants to explain that it's not what it seems. She reveals that when she was a child, she approached Arlong to join his crew, showcasing her map-making ability, and offered her help in exchange for Arlong selling Kakoyasi village to her for 100 million berries. Najiko thinks it's a huge amount of money but is surprised to learn that Nami already has it. She is sad because her sister kept the secret for so long and even let her hate her. Their emotional moment is interrupted by Nezumi, who is searching for the treasure hidden by some pirates in that area. Upon discovering all of Nami's treasure, he confiscates it on behalf of the Marine and the world government. Nami tries to resist when she realizes that Arlong sent him, but she clearly can't stop him. Najiko tries to stop her sister before she runs after them, but she can't. Meanwhile, Arlong speaks to his people about the superiority of fishmen over all humans and how, with the map of the Grand Line, they will reclaim what is rightfully theirs. He plans to spread his wrath from Kakoyasi village to the far reaches of the East Blue and anything that stands in their way, 
all the way to the Grand Line, so they can show the humans their rightful place. Finally, Nami doesn't reach Nezumi in time, so she kneels on the ground and begins to harm her tattoo with a knife while repeating Arlong's name. But at that moment, Luffy stops her. Even though she repeats that he should leave, she eventually begs for her friend's help. Luffy looks at her intensely and promises to do so. After putting on his straw hat, Luffy returns to his crewmates at Nami's old house, from where they watch Kakoyasi village engulfed in flames. In the next scene, back in time, we see how Nami's tattoo is being made, causing immense pain to the young girl. Arlong claims that she now belongs to him, as he will use her map-making talent to rule the ocean. He tells her that when she pays him the 100 million berries, no matter how she obtains it, he will set her free along with the village. The next day, the Straw Hat crew watches as Arlong destroys Kakoyasi village as punishment. They also see the entire village gearing up for a fight after Najiko tells them about Nami's sacrifice. Nami refuses to let them go to Arlong Park because she believes they will all die. But the entire village, led by Genzo, believes that if they can't buy their freedom, they must fight. On the other hand, Nezumi arrives at the ship with Garp, where Bogard receives him and takes the captain to the vice admiral. Garp questions everything that's happening in the territory, and Nezumi says it's all the straw hat's fault and claims that he will test the sharpness of his sword, but Garp forbids him while thinking about where to find Luffy. Finally, Luffy and his crew attack Arlong Park. Usopp and Zoro take care of Arlong's henchmen, while Nami and Luffy go after Arlong. Although the fish men minions want to stop them, the crew manages to defeat them, and Luffy and Nami reach the map room. There, Nami wants to grab the map and leave quickly, but as she attempts to do so, Arlong arrives. Arlong says that from today, he will lead the fish men to start a revolution to humiliate humans. Nami questions that he has already made so many people suffer, and Arlong responds that it's only the beginning. He then complains that she betrayed him but thanks her for all the maps she made, which he will use to conquer the East Blue and all the seas. Arlong then attacks Luffy, questioning how he could have used Nami like that, which enraged Luffy. Luffy destroys his sword with his bare hands, stating that Nami is a person, not a tool. She has her own hopes and dreams, which Arlong clearly took away from her. That's why he's certain he will shatter him, just like the previous villains who hurt people. Luffy orders Nami to escape, but Arlong doesn't want to let her go, and Luffy stops him. Meanwhile, Usopp escapes from a fishman, and Sanji and Zoro keep taking down the fishmen, seeing who can defeat more. They release Buggy, who betrays them and runs off. Usopp finally manages to defeat the fishman after faking his own death, and then using a special bullet that makes the fishman explode. Now, in Arlong Park, Kirubai arrives to face Sanji and Zoro, making it a tough fight. Luffy, on the other hand, struggles to seriously hurt the fish man, who keeps asking him about how he treated Nami. Unable to inflict significant damage, Straw Hat decides to destroy the entire map room he built. Finally, Sanji defeats Kirubai, especially when he disrespects Nami, which really angers him. Nami returns to the others, and they ask about their captain. She tells them that he's still inside, battling Arlong. Luffy decides to use his gum gum gatling gun to attack the fishman. But as Arlong's kingdom starts to crumble, he boldly claims that no human can defeat him. Luffy unleashes his attack, known as the gum gum axe, landing a powerful blow on Arlong's face. This causes Arlong Park to collapse. Sanji, Zoro, and Usopp watch as the tower falls and worry about Luffy. However, Luffy emerges from the rubble without a scratch, declaring that Nami is not alone. At night, the villagers celebrate Arlong's defeat. Sanji cooks for everyone and tries to impress Nami's sister, but it's clear that his attempts at romance are not working. Yuzop, surrounded by an eager audience, embellishes his story, leaving everyone amazed. Suddenly, Garp and his men arrive at the park, surrounding the entire village. The vice admiral gives the order to arrest the Straw Hat crew. Initially, Halmapo and Kobe hesitate, but they eventually carry out their duty. Garp scolds Luffy for choosing the path of a pirate and demands that he surrender. However, Luffy adamantly refuses, leading to a confrontation. Luffy doesn't want to fight his own grandfather, but Garp leaves him with no choice. Garp questions Luffy's strength, and despite Luffy using his special abilities, his grandfather easily overpowers him. During the battle, Luffy confesses to his grandfather that he can keep hitting him all day long, but he will never give up on his dream. He's determined to reach the Grand Line, find the One Piece, and become the Pirate King, no matter what Garp thinks. Garp recalls how Gold Roger used to taunt him, and this memory makes him burst into laughter. He decides to send his men to search for Arlong's soldiers, allowing Luffy's crew to go free. Garp then reveals that it was all a test, and from now on, Luffy is on his own. 
However, Luffy responds that he'll never be alone because he has his loyal crewmates by his side. The next day, Nami stands at her mother's grave and shares her feelings. She tells her mother that she has finally found freedom and vows to continue her journey with pride. She apologizes for not appreciating the sacrifices her mother made for her. Now, she understands the meaning of fighting for family and promises to honor that. Nami wonders if her mother is looking down on her with pride. Najiko, who had been listening, reassures Nami that their mother was always proud of her, just like she is now. Although Najiko is sad that Nami has to leave, she promises that she will always have a home in their village. Later, Kobe visits Luffy and excitedly shows him his wanted poster. Luffy is thrilled to see that he has the highest bounty in the East Blue and gives Kobe a warm hug. Kobe explains that this is their farewell, and Luffy bids him goodbye, encouraging his friend to become a great marine. Luffy rushes back to the Going Merry to share the news with his crew. Zoro sees the price on his poster and worries that it will attract bounty hunters in the East Blue. However, Luffy reassures them, saying they're lucky because they're leaving the East Blue and heading to the Grand Line. Back in Luffy's hometown, the waitress who used to take care of him proudly looks at his wanted poster. Hire reads the news and is delighted to see Yuzop on the same wanted poster as Luffy. Zeph, in his restaurant, proudly displays the poster in his kitchen. Elsewhere, Buggy is furious when he sees the poster and vows to one day get revenge on Luffy. Nearby, Alvida overhears him and threatens to do it herself if he doesn't. Garp is proud of his grandson's high bounty and sees Luffy as a reflection of himself. Later, Halmepo and Kobe apologize for their earlier disobedience, but Garp doesn't scold them. Instead, he congratulates them for having their own sense of justice and not blindly following orders. As punishment for their disobedience, Kobe and Halmepo are informed that they will receive personal training. Kobe is thrilled because he aspires to become strong enough to face someone like Luffy one day. Kalmepo, on the other hand, reveals that his dream is to prove to the world that he can wield a sword just as well as Zoro. Garp reflects on Zeph's words and believes that the time has come for the next generation to step up. Meanwhile, in another part of the world, the legendary swordsman Mihawk approaches Shanks and his crew. Shanks, not in the mood for a duel, admits that he's not even half as powerful as he used to be. Mihawk reassures him that he didn't come to fight and then presents Shanks with Luffy's wanted poster. Shanks is overjoyed by the news, and Mihawk mentions that he recently met someone very interesting who might catch Shanks' attention. He agrees to join Shanks' crew for some relaxation and drinks. In the next scene, Luffy has placed a piece of Nami's home on the ship, and Sanji is delighted because it means he can make tangerine pie. Nami is pleased with the tangerine tree and orders Usopp to reveal the surprise they prepared. The crew unveils the ship's flag, featuring the Straw Hat logo, and Luffy cheers enthusiastically for his own pirate flag. As they continue sailing on the sea, Nami believes they are getting closer to the entrance to the Grand Line. However, she's puzzled by the map, which shows a peculiar river that looks like a mountain, defying the laws of nature. Luffy reassures her, reminding her that she's the navigator, and she'll figure it out. Sanji calls for Luffy's attention because he has an idea. Luffy gathers the entire crew for a special ceremony to mark their entrance into the Grand Line. Each crew member shares their dreams and desires, pledging that nothing will ever stop them from pursuing them. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.